And what we've got is a lot of guys that hadn't been on stage before in their life, a lot of them. Um, and so we really want to, uh, between acts, really uh, give them applause. I know they're going to deserve it. I think you're going to see a pretty special showing because this is a really talented class. Um, one thing I want you to be aware of what you're watching this is 12 Angry Men, uh, which is the story of a 18 year old Puerto Rican boy who was seen um, ramming a knife into his father and killing his father. It looks really bad for the kid. Um, uh, he had to have a court appointed lawyer who didn't try apparently very hard. And so it looks bad, but. Um, and, and really all the jurors are about, you know, prepared to vote guilty and just take it right into the judge. But one guy, our hero, uh, number eight, he just says, hey, um, I think we need a, a boy's life is worth talking about, you know, rather than us spending five minutes and going back in. And from that little seed, um, uh, as they talk, they start to question, hey, could this have happened? Could, you know, could this testimony have been right? And so, you know, one of the great things about our system of justice uh, is that it requires, a, um, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt. And uh, so that's, that's kind of the key to this. Um, you may, some people are in two of the acts. So if you see one person up here as the foreman, and you see that in act one, and you see that same person over here as number eight in act two, just keep in mind they're playing the role of whatever seat they're in, okay? They're, they, they probably play a different role. Sometimes they're playing the same role, just in a different act, okay? Um, so uh, if you would, uh, please put your hands together for 12 Angry Men. Good luck, gentlemen. You know something? It's hot. You'd at least think that's air conditioned the place. I almost dropped that in court. Okay, gentlemen. Everybody, Derek, if there's anything you want, I'll write outside. Just not. Not guilty. One. 
living on one to forgive. Now we know what's in. Boy, there's always one. Somebody's in left field. You think he's not guilty? I don't know. I never saw a guilty man in my life. You sat right in that court and heard the same thing I did. The man's a dangerous killer. You could see it. He's 18 years old. That's old enough. He knifed his own father, four inches into the chest. An innocent 18-year-old kid. They proved it a dozen different ways. Do you want me to list them? No. Well, do you believe the story? I don't know whether I believe it or not. Maybe I don't. So what you vote not guilty for? There were 11 votes for guilty. It's not so easy for me to raise my hand and send a boy off to die without talking about it first. And who says it's easy for me? No one. What, just because I voted fast? I think the kid's guilty. You couldn't change my mind if I talked to you for 100 years. I don't want to change your mind. I just want to talk for a while. Look, the boy's been kicked around all his life. You know, living in a slum. His mother dead since he was nine. That's not a very good head start. He's a tough, angry kid. You know why some kids get that way? Because we knock them on the head once a day, every day. I just think we owe him a few words, that's all. I don't mind telling you this, mister. The boy got a fair trial, didn't he? You know what that trial cost? He's lucky he got it. Look, we're all grown-ups here. You're not gonna tell us what to believe, knowing what he is. I've been wrong all my life. You can't believe a word they said. <laughs> you know that. I don't know that. What a terrible thing for a man to believe. Which one is this on to be a group characteristic? You have no monopoly on the truth. All right, it's not Sunday. We don't need a sermon. What this man says is very dangerous. I don't see any need for arguing like this. I think we ought to be able to behave like gentlemen. Right. If we're going to discuss this case, let's discuss the facts. He's right. We have a job to do. Let's do it. Uh, if you gentlemen don't mind, I'm going to remove my jacket. Uh, the, the heat. I may have an idea here. I'm just thinking out loud now, but it seems to me that it's up to us to convince this gentleman that he's wrong and we're right. Maybe if we all took a minute or two, you know, just throw some ideas out on the stoop and see if the cat lifts it up. That sounds fair. Suppose we'll go around the table. All right, let's do it. Uh, I guess you're first. I think he's guilty. It's obvious. I mean, nobody proves otherwise. Nobody has to prove otherwise. The burden of proof is on the prosecution. The defendant doesn't have to open his mouth. That's in the Constitution. The Fifth Amendment. You've heard of it. Well, sure I've heard of it. What I was saying was, well, anyway, I just think he's guilty. All right, let's get to the facts. Number one. Let's take the old man who lived on the second floor of the apartment, right underneath the room where the murder took place. At 10 minutes after 12 on the night of the killing, he, said, he heard loud noises upstairs. He said it sounded like a fight. He then heard the boy say to his father, I'm gonna kill you. A second later, he heard the body fall. He then ran to the door of the apartment, looked out and saw the boy running down the stairs and out of the house. He then called the police. They found the father with a knife in his chest. And the coroner fixed the time of death around midnight. Right, now what else do you want? The boy's entire story is flimsy. He claimed he was at the movies that night. That's a little ridiculous, don't you think? He couldn't even remember what picture he saw. That's right. Did you hear that? You're absolutely right. Look, what about the one across the street? If her testimony doesn't prove it, then nothing does. That's right. She saw the killing, didn't she? Let's go in order. Just a minute. Here's one who's been lying in bed and can't sleep. And talk, you know? Anyway, she looks at the window right across the street so she can stick the knife into his father. She's done it all of his life. His window's right opposite her and across the L tracks. And she swore she saw him do it. Through the window of a passing elevated train. Okay, and they proved it for us by going through the window of the passing elevated train at night and see what's happening on the other side. They proved it! I'd like to ask you something. How come you believe her? He's one of them, too, isn't she? You're a pretty smart fellow, aren't you? Whoa. Let's quiet down. He stabbed a man in the arm. 
This is a very fine boy. Ever since he was five years old, his father beat him up regularly. He used his fists. So when I was a kid like that, you're right. It's the kids, the way they are, you know. They don't listen. I got a kid. When he was eight years old, he ran away from a fight. I saw it. I was so ashamed. I told him right out, I'm going to make a man out of you. I'm going to bust you up into little pieces trying. Well, I made a man out of him. When he was 15, he hit me in the face. He's big, you know. I haven't seen him in three years. Rotten kids. You work your heart out. All right, let's get on with it. Look, we're missing the point here. This boy, let's say he's the product of a filthy neighborhood in a broken home. We can't help that. We're not here to go into the reasons why slums are breeding grounds for criminals. They are. I know it and so do you. Children born of slum backgrounds are potential menaces to society. You said there. I don't want any part of them. Believe me. I've lived in a slum my whole life. Oh, now wait a second. I used to play in a backyard that was filled with garbage. Maybe it still smells on me. Calm down. I'm sure it was nothing personal. There is something personal. Come on now. He didn't mean you, fella. Let's I... not be so sensitive. I can understand his sensitivity. <laughs> Let's stop big We're we'll wasting our time. It's your turn. All right. I had a strange feeling about this trial. Somehow, I felt that the defense counsel never really conducted a thorough cross-examination. I mean, he was appointed by court to defend the boy. He hardly seemed interested. Too many questions were left unasked. And what about the ones that were asked? For instance, let's take that cute little switch knife. You know, the one that fine upright kid admitted to buying? Oh. All right, let's talk about it. Let's get in here and have a look at it. I'd like to see it again. Mr. Foreman? We all know what it looks like. I don't see where we have to see it again. What do you think? The gentleman has a right to see exhibits and evidence. Okay with me. The knife is a pretty strong piece of evidence, don't you agree? I do. The boy admits going out of his house at 8 o'clock that night after being slapped by his father. I think it's a flinch. There's a difference between a slap and a flinch. Or a punch. The boy went to a neighborhood store and bought a switch knife. The storekeeper was arrested the following day after he admitted selling it to him. It's a very unusual knife. The storekeeper identified it and said it was the only kind he had of, in its and he saw. Now why did the boy get this knife? As a present for his friend, he says, am I right so far? Right. You bet he's right. Now listen to this man. He knows what he's talking about. Next, the boy claims that on his way home, the knife must have fallen through a hole in his coat pocket that he never saw it again. Now that's a story, gentlemen. We know what actually happened. The boy took the knife home, and a few hours later, he stabbed his father with it. He even remembered to wipe off the fingerprints. Everyone connected with this case identified this knife. Now are you trying to tell me that someone picked it up off the ground and stabbed his father with it just to be amusing? No, I'm just saying it's possible that the boy lost a knife and someone else stabbed his father with a similar knife. It's possible. Take a look at this knife. It's a very strict, unusual knife. I've never seen one like it before in my life. Neither had the storekeeper who sold it to him. Now, aren't you trying to make us accept a pretty incredible coincidence? I'm not trying to make anyone accept it. I'm just saying it's possible. And I'm saying it's not possible. What are you trying to do? Yeah, who do you think you are? Look at it. Same night. Quiet. Let's be quiet. Where'd you get it? I got it last night at a little junk shop around the corner from the boy's house. It costs two dollars. Now listen, you pulled a real smart trick here, but you proved absolutely zero. Maybe there are ten knives like that. So what? Maybe there are. The boy lied and you know it. He may have lied. Do you think he lied? That's a stupid question. Sure he lied. How about you? Do you, you think he lied? You don't have to ask me that. You know my answer. He lied. Do you think he lied? I... I don't know. Now wait a second. Who do you think you are? This guy's lawyer? Listen, there's still 11 of us who think that the kid's guilty. You're alone. What do you think you're going to accomplish? If you want to be stubborn and hang this jury, he'll be trying to get him found guilty. Sure as he's born. You're probably right. Then what are you going to do about it? We could be here all night. It's only one night. A man may die. Well, whose fault is that? Do you think maybe we'll you think so much worse than you could fall to let the person? I don't want to force anyone to listen. Look, gentlemen, we can spend all night here. Well, that was that was better than to do than sit in the dry room all day. I can't understand a word in here. Why do we all have to talk at once? He's right. I think we ought to deal with it. Get on with it. Well, what do you say? You're the one holding up the show. I'm 
got a proposition to make. I want to call for another vote. I want you 11 men to vote by a secret ballot. I'll say, if there are still 11 votes for guilty, I won't stand alone. We'll take in a guilty verdict right now. Okay then, let's do it. Does everyone agree? All right, pass this out. Guilty. 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 Another guilty. Guilty again. Not guilty. How do you like that? Who was it? I think we have a right to know. Excuse me, this is a secret ballot. We agreed on this point. No, if the gentleman wants it to remain secret. What do you mean? There are no secrets in here. I know who it is. You come near both guilty, then the sick preacher starts to tear your heart out about stories about a poor little kid who just couldn't help but make a murderer. So you change your vote. If that is the most sick, hold it. Hold it? We're trying to put a guilty man to cherry belongs. Now we're bringing sentences on fairy tales? Now just a minute. Please, I would like to say something here. I have always thought that a man was entitled to have unpopular opinions in this country. That is the reason I came here. I wanted to have the right to disagree in my own country, and I am ashamed to say. What are we asking this to now? The whole history of your country? Yeah, let's stick to the subject. I want to ask you what made you change your vote. There's nothing for him to tell you. You can change his vote. I do. Perhaps you would like to know why. No, we would like to know why. The man wants to talk. Thank you. This gentleman chose to stand alone against us. That's his right. It takes a great deal of courage to stand alone, even if you believe in something very strongly. He left the verdict up to us. He gambled for support, and I gave it to him. I want to hear more. But it's 10 to 2. That's fine. If the speech is over, let's go on. Look, buddy, I was a little excited. Oh, you know how it is. Didn't mean to get nasty. Not the person. Look, suppose you answer me this. If the kid did kill him, who did? As far as I know, we're supposed to decide whether the foreign child is guilty or not. We're not concerned with anyone's motives here. Guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. This is an important thing to remember. Everyone's a lawyer! Suppose you explain what your reasonable doubts are. This is not easy. So far, it's only a feeling I have. A feeling. Perhaps you don't understand. The feelings! What are we gonna do? Spend the night talking about our feelings? What about the facts? You said a mouthful. Look, the old man heard the kid yell, I'm gonna kill you. Then he, saw, then he heard the body fall. One second after that. Then he saw the boy running out of the house 15 seconds later. That's right. And let's not forget the woman across the street. She looked into the open window and saw the boy stab his father. She saw it. That's not enough for you? It's not enough for me. Well, How do you like him? It's like talking into a dead phone. The woman saw the killer through the window of the moving elevated train. The train had five cars which she saw through the last two. She remembers the most insignificant details. What do you have to say about that? I don't know. It doesn't sound right to me. Well, suppose you think about it. Let me impress you. Hey, what's a four-letter word for? Moron! <laughs> Wait a minute! This isn't a game! What do you think you are? Alright, let's take it easy. I've got a right mind to walk on the table Don't him, please! I don't want any fights in here. Can you see him? The nerve! The absolute nerve! All right, forget it. It don't mean anything. How about sitting down? This isn't the game. Who's the game? Here's something. How long does it take an elevated train going at top speed to pass a given point? What does that got to do with anything? How long? Guess. I wouldn't have the slightest idea. What do you think? About 10 or 12 seconds, maybe. I'd say that's a fair guess. Anyone else? I would think about 10 seconds, perhaps. About 10 seconds. All right, say 10 seconds. What are you getting at? This. An L takes 10 seconds to pass a given point. Or That given point is the window of the room in which the killing took place. You can almost reach out of the window of that room and touch the L, right? All right, let me ask you this. Did anyone in here ever live next to L tracks? I have. And when the window is open and the train goes by, the noise is almost unbearable. You can't hear yourself think. You can't hear yourself think? We get to the point. The old man heard the boy say, I'm going to kill you. And one second later, he heard a body fall. One second, that's the testimony, right? Right. The woman across the street looked through the windows of the last two cars of the L and saw a body fall. Right? The last two cars? What are you giving us here? An L takes 10 seconds to pass a given point. Or 
two seconds per car. That elf must have been going by the old man's window for at least six seconds or maybe more before he heard the body fall. The old man would have had to hurt What do you mean? He sure could have heard it. Could he? The boy has it out. That's enough for me. I think he could have heard it. I mean, maybe he didn't hear it. I mean, with the L noise. What are you people talking about? Are you calling the old man a liar? Well, it stands to reason. You're crazy. Why would he lie? What's he got to gain? <laughs> Attention, baby. You keep coming up with these bright sayings. Why don't you turn one into a newspaper? They pay two dollars. Why make the old man have lied? You have the right to be heard. It's just that I looked at him for a very long time. The seam of his jacket was split under the arm. Did you notice that? He was a very old man with a torn jacket. I think I know him better than anyone else here. This is a quiet, frightened, insignificant man who has been nothing all his life, who has never had recognition, his name in the newspapers. Nobody knows him after 75 years. That's a very sad thing. A man like this needs to be recognized, to be questioned and listened to. Put it just once. This is very important. So you're trying to tell us he lied about a thing why they shouldn't be important? No, he wouldn't really lie. But perhaps he'd make himself relieved that he heard those words and recognized the boy's face. Well, that's the most fantastic story I've ever heard. How can you come up with a thing like that? What do you know about it? I speak from experience. <clears throat> uh, is there anything else? Anybody want a cough drop? Come on, let's get on with it. I'll take one. Thanks. Now, there's something else I'd like to point out here. I think we proved that the old man can have possibly heard the boy say, I'm going to kill you. But supposing he really did. This phrase, how many times has each one of you used it before? Probably hundreds. If you do that once more, Junior, I'm going to murder you. Come on, Rocky, kill it! We say it every day. That doesn't mean we're going to kill someone. Wait a minute. Brace was, I'm going to kill you. And the boy screams it out the top of his lungs. Don't try and tell me he didn't mean it. Anybody says a thing like that, the way he said it, they mean it. And how they mean it. Well, let me ask you this. Do you really think the boy would shout a thing like that so the whole neighborhood can hear it? I don't think so. He's much too bright for that. Brian! He's a common, ignorant slob. He don't even speak good English. He doesn't even speak good English. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to change my vote. It's not you. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. The vote is not for three in favor of guilty. Well, if that isn't the end, and what are we basing it on? Stories this guy made up? He ought to write for the amazing detective monthly. He'd make a fortune. Listen, the kid had a lawyer, didn't he? Why didn't his lawyer bring up all these? Lawyers can't think of everything. Oh, brother, you sit in here and pull stories out of thin air. Now we're supposed to believe that the old man didn't get up out of the at bed, run to the door, and see the kid beat it downstairs 15 seconds after the killing? He's only saying he did to be important. Did the old man say he ran to the door? Ran, walked, took a trolley. What's the difference? He got there. I don't remember what the old man said, but I don't see how you're wrong. He said he went from his bedroom to the front door. That's enough, isn't it? Where was this bedroom again? Down the hall somewhere. Thought you remembered everything. Don't no. you remember that? No. Mr. Foreman, I like to take a look at the diagram of the apartment. Why don't we have him run the child over just so we can get everything straight? Mr. Foreman. I heard you. What's this for? How come we're the only person in this room who wants to see exhibits all the time? I want to see this one too. Then I don't want to start wasting time. If we're about to start waiting through all this nonsense about where the body was found. We're not. We're going to find out how a man who had two strokes in the past three years has walked through the lamp and gets to his front door all in 15 seconds. He said 20 seconds. He said 15. How long, how does he know how long 15 seconds is? He can't judge that kind of thing. He said 15. He was he, positive about it. He was an old man. You saw him. Half the time he was confused. How could he be positive about anything?
The old man's apartment is directly beneath it and exactly the same. Here are the L tracks, the bedroom, the living room, and this is the hall. Here's the front door to the apartment, and here are the steps. Now the old man was in bed in this room. So he says he got up, went out into the hall, down the hall, to the front door, opened it, looked out just in time to see the boy racing down the stairs. Am I right? That's the story. For the hundredth time. Fifteen seconds after he heard the body fall. Correct. His bed was out the window. It was 12 feet from his bed to the bedroom door. The length of the hall is 43 feet. He had to get up out of bed, walk 12 feet, open the bedroom door, walk 43 feet, open the front door, all in 15 seconds. Do you think that's possible? You know it's possible. He can only walk very slowly. They had to help him into the witness chair. You make it sound like a long walk. It's not. For an old man who's had a stroke, it's a long walk. What are you doing? I want to try this thing. Let's see how long it took it. I'm going to face off 12 feet, the length of the bedroom. You're crazy. You can't recreate that kind of thing. Perhaps if we can see it, this is an important point. It's a ridiculous waste of time. Let him try it. Hand me that chair. This is the bedroom door. Now, how far would you say it is from here to where you gentlemen are standing? I'll say it was 40 feet. Just about. 40 feet is close enough. It's shorter than the length of the old man's hall. Wouldn't you say that? A few feet, maybe. Look, this is absolutely insane. What makes you think you can? Actually, do you mind if we try it? Where do you want to take 15 seconds? We can spread it. Who's got to watch for the second hit? I have. When you want me to start, slap the table. That'll be the party falling. Time me from there. OK, I'm ready. Oh, brother. Go. Speed it up. He walked twice as fast. This is, I think, even more quickly than the old man walking to the work. If you think I should go any faster, I will. Exiting the bedroom, entering the hall. Chain lock, stop. All right. What's the time? 15, 20, 30, 41 seconds. Guilty. Number 
speak my piece and you listen to me. They're no good. There's not one who's any good. Take from me. This kill trial, well, don't you know about them? Hey, listen, what are you doing? I'm trying to tell you something. I've had enough. Sit down, shut up, and don't open your mouth again. I'm only trying to tell you. All right. <laughs> Sit down, everybody. I still believe the boy is guilty of murder. I'll tell you why. To me, the most damning piece of evidence was given by the woman across the street who claimed she actually saw the murder committed. That's right. As far as I'm concerned, that's the most important testimony. All right, let's go over to her testimony. What exactly did she say? I believe I can recount it accurately. She said she went to bed at about 11 o'clock that night. Her bed was next to the open window, and she could look out of the window while she was lying down and see directly into the window across the street. She tossed and turned for over an hour, unable to fall asleep. Finally, she turns towards the window at about 12 ish and as she looks out, she sees the boy stab his father. As far as I can see, this is unshakable testimony. That's what I mean. That's the whole case. I don't see how you can vote for acquittal. You, number 12, what do you think? Well, maybe there's so much evidence to say. What do you mean, maybe? He's absolutely right. You can draw all the other evidence. That was my feeling. <coughs> Does anyone happen to really know the time? Ten minutes of six. It's late. You don't suppose they let us go home and finish in the morning? I've got a kid with mom's. Not a chance. Pardon me, can't you see the clock without your glasses? Not clearly, they're a little broken. Oh, I don't know, well, I Look, this may be a dumb thought, but what do you do when you wake up at night and want to know what time it is? What do you mean, I put on my glasses and look at the clock? You don't wear them to bed? Of course not, no one wears eyeglasses to bed. What's all this for? Well, I was thinking, you know the woman saying she saw the killing wears glasses? So does my grandmother. So what? Your grandmother isn't a murder witness. You've never tasted her meatloaf. <laughs> Look, <laughs> stop me if I'm wrong, but this woman wouldn't wear her eyeglasses to bed, would she? Wait, did she even wear glasses at all? I don't remember. Of course she did. The woman wore bifocals. I remember this very clearly. They look quite strong. That's right, bifocals. She never took them off. They look like the bottoms of a couple of Coke bottles. She did wear glasses. Funny, I never thought of it. Listen, she didn't run into bed, that's for sure. She testified that in her midst of her tossing and turning, she rolled over and looked casually out the window. The murder was taking place as she looked out. <coughs> and then the lights went out for a split second later. She could have had time to put on her glasses. No, <laughs> maybe. She only saw the boy kill his father. I say, she only saw the boy. How do you know what she saw? Maybe she's farsighted. How does he know all these things? Does anyone still not think there's not a reasonable doubt? I think he's guilty. Does anyone else? No, I'm convinced he's not guilty. You're alone. I don't care whether I'm alone or not. I have a right. You have a right. Well, I told you, I think the kid's guilty. What else do you want? Your argument. I gave you my argument. We're not convinced. We're waiting to hear them again. We have time. Listen to me. What's the matter with you? You're the god. You made all, your, all the arguments. You can't turn now. A guilty man's gonna be walking the streets a murderer. He's got to die. Stay with me. I'm sorry. There's a reasonable doubt in my mind now. We're waiting. Well, you're not going to intimidate me. I'm gonna tell to my own opinion. It's gonna be a hung jury. That's it. And there's nothing we can do about that, except hope. Some night, maybe in a few months, you'll get some sleep. You're all alone. It takes a great deal of courage to stand alone. Right, kids. You work your life out. Thank <laughs> you.
relatives, feel free to greet the actors. Uh, everyone else, uh, back to our room.